Hey, it's KK, Metal Voice Man in the Street. I'm in Newburgh today in Newburgh Vintage Emporium with... Me, hi, I'm Corey Glover. Corey Glover from Living Color. Today we're celebrating the 35th anniversary of this bombastic release, Vivid. Happened today. Released 35 years ago, today. Feel the power, What did this album mean to you when it came out? Well, I mean, it had to knock you off. Well, you know, we worked so hard to get it done to, and to get it out. And we've been struggling for a while. Like, this is like the mid 80s and we're, you know, playing around around New York City, getting a kind of a, getting a buzz about it. And we spent most of our time playing around town and getting a sort of name for ourselves. And then we would, uh, and then we'd we go we ride at this rehearsal space in uh, Bushwick, right above literally the L train. Oh wow! Um, the L, the M, and the F train. Um, that ending of open light to a landlord. The train going by is that. Train. Is that the L? Yeah. Okay. Is that train? I used to take that train into the city all the time. Yeah, it's train going into the junction. Yep. Yeah, it was that we took. We were like one. It was like. One day we were doing, we were re rehearsing the song, and at the song end, the train started. And we're like, wow, that's great. That sounds really good. We should do that. But so we were, we rehearse and write and write and rehearse all that time, like two, three days a week, then go play somewhere that weekend, and then come back on a t Tuesday or Wednesday and start rehearsing again and start writing again. And you know, like, um, the song that everybody knows, Cult's Personality. Is that your first one you were? No. It was not. Funny Vibe was around. Even before I got in the band, Funny Vibe was around. Um, I Wanna Know was written before we, before me, Will, and Muzzy got in the band. Um, but we would we wrote stuff like Cult, Middleman. Love Middleman. Um, what else did we, we wrote? Open Lights for Landlord, Which Way to America, What's Your Favorite Color? All that stuff we did in rehearsal. And we would... Uh, you know, Cult's personality, we came in one day, and the song was written in a session, in a like five hour session in that rehearsal studio in Bushwick. <clears throat> so we uh, we came up with it, we came up with the groove, Vernon had these lyrics, you know, I'm reading these lyrics, and as I'm reading the lyrics, it's like, yeah, it just goes like that, it goes like this, it goes like that. So, um, and we went in with an idea and came out with a song, and we had no idea how impactful that song would be. But we did what we could. And that was the first single, correct? No. no. Actually, the first single was Middleman. Middleman? Middleman was... Oh, I know Middleman, Middleman. Yeah. Middleman was actually the first single. And we did a video for that. And we kept saying, you know, Cult is really the one that's going to do it. And uh, we put out Middleman. Then we put out Cult. And Cult did really well. And then we did... Open Letter to a Landlord, and then we did Glamour Boys. So those are the four singles from that record. Um, and, you know, just the the ability to go out and play it. And people, all we wanted to do is people to hear it. We didn't know whether, we didn't, we weren't really concerned about it being a success or not being a success. It was our first record. We thought it was going to take us a minute for people to catch on and realize what we were doing. But it seemed to, you know, with that one song, and the climate that the song came out in sort of helped project it into what it is now. Yep. This, that single. You know, and you know, Open Lines for Landlords is a B-side on this too. That's which, the B-side? That's there? the B-side, yeah. Wild. Um, so we uh, we got a chance to, to travel and see a lot of the world. You know, we, and we didn't stop working. We worked that whole time. Um, well, you had Mick Jagger come in and help you guys when you were still before Platoon. Right? No, this is after Platoon. I made. You, I made, you were in, in. I was an actor, yeah. but we we had Vernon got a chance to play for Jagger on his solo record. Okay, and Jagger had heard about Vernon and Living Color 
and it's like he came to see him and Jeff Beck actually came to see us play at CBGB's. And after that, he was like, is, it, is there anything I can do to help you guys? Just let me know. We're looking for a record deal at the time, right? So um, he's like, I'm recording and mixing my record at the studio in the city in, on uh, 48th Street. Uh, I have, I've rented out the whole studio, so I have, I have spare rooms. If you want to come in and we'll do some demos, um, you know, we'll, we'll work on some stuff and see if that, how that, if that works out. So we went in and we did, uh, which way to America and we did something else. I can't remember. Oh, Glamour Boys, which we thought was sort of commercial in, in its own right. So he did, he produced and recorded those two songs as a demo to send out to record companies. And we got some got some interest and in people were coming around and saying stuff, you know, the whole stick, like, we can make this happen, we can make this you into the biggest stars in the world, blah, 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 blah. And then we went to Epic and Epic was like, what we want to do is get, what will make this work, what a record like this is, will work is if they see you, if they see you play this stuff. We can listen to it all day and it sounds great and sonically, that's good, but we want to make a record that sounds like you playing live. So, we we got Ed Stasium. That's it. You got the Ramones guy. Nice. Right. Very good job. Uh, you know, and that, you know, because of his, you know, he like, he did the whole raw thing. He did it, he made it extremely raw. And him and his his engineer, Paul Hammickson, aces, the best people in the world. Um, we sat there and... You know, he did a little arranging, but Ed did some arranging. Like, he changed the way Cult Personality, when we did it originally, it started chorus, verse, chorus. And he said, let make the, do the verse and then do the chorus. And then change this around. Put this here. Put that there. And did some arranging on the fly as we're playing it. And it and it changed the, the way it was perceived. You know, um, part of the thing about us, you know, we come from a varied background, you know. Vernon has a very... Uh, well, Vernon's from England. He's, well, he's, he's from England. He was born in England, but he lived in, in, in Brooklyn. He was most, in Brooklyn also? Most, well, all most four of you guys in Brooklyn? No. Um, uh, me and Vernon are from Brooklyn. Will is from the Bronx, and Muzzy was from Queens, um, from uh, South Jamaica. And I'm not South Jamaica, someplace else, but I, whatever. Because he'll tell me, he'll call me if he sees <laughs> and say, I didn't live in South Jamaica. Um... But he, he... I lived in Rosedale. If that yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, I'm he's, he lived off of Farmer's Boulevard. That's all I knew. Okay. You know? Jamaica. Everybody lived <laughs> off of Farmer's Boulevard. You know? Um, so, uh, so we all had a real eclectic background. You know, Will ha has got a degree from Berkeley School of Music and Engineering. Muzzy had a degree from uh, uh, New York... Uh, from NYCC, um, you know, brilliant sort of eclectic kind of things. As I said, Vernon had this real sort of jazz thing, and I would run from, you know, uh, you know, R and B and soul music to hardcore and and everything in between, plus gospel and and spiritual music and all that other stuff. And that sort of combination of the two, sort of, of the four, I should say, really made things work. So we were all over the place when it came to things. And like, we knew that it needed what we had, what we had in our pocket is we have a jazz and a funk kind of aesthetic and, and Vernon wanted to make it harder and we wanted to make it groovier and, and all that kind of stuff. And Ed sort of heard that and sort of made it work. So hats off to Ed Stasium and Paul Hamilton. Very good. And you, uh, you toured with the Stones. You we got did. that out of it the, from August 89 to 90? Mm -hmm. August 89 to August 90? About a year? About about nine months. We in between did. the two albums, correct? Yeah, no, the no, first no. Two? No, we, it was all in one album. It was all for the... For all, the... all from Vivid. Okay. And we were sort of ended it like the end of 88. We were like this... The, the winter of 88 was when we finished that tour. So we were out from August to about December. End of November. And... Um, we we it was hit it hard, but but before that, um, when the when the record came out, 
we were on the road constantly. We were in vans running around the country. And then How were you greeted outside of New York? The New York area knew you. Were you greeted, uh, were you accepted mm -hmm. by the masses it when depended. you hit the other? It depended on where we went. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there was a, a lot of, we got a lot of press. And they got a lot of underground press about the band. So a lot of people were there and very curious about what we were doing. You know, um, Vernon was touted as like a guitar phenomenon. Yeah. You know, so people came to see what that was about. And then they saw that we had songs, actual songs. And radio was reluctant, really kind of reluctant to play us. But once they got a hold of something, they didn't let it go, and that sort of helped. And MTV pushes them all too, correct? It took a minute for MTV. They, they didn't to, jump right on it. They didn't on, right? jump on it immediately because we put out we, we put out Cults first. We didn't put out Cults first. We put out Middleman middle first, first right? and they played it late nights, and they played it on 120 minutes, and they played it. They didn't play. They didn't play it in prime time. Um, and, but because they were they were sort of acting like a radio station, right? You know, and if they got phones. Back then, it was phones. If they got phones about they a used song, to call in. yeah, that's you'd, right. you'd be able to call in and say, "I like that song. I like that song." And that's what sort of pushed us, up, pushed us along. And then, when Cult Personality, Cult Personality was sort of like a bubbling under as a radio sort of like thing, and people were pl requesting it on the radio. And because of that, we got a lot more push. Once MTV got a hold of it, and they saw it, and people saw it, and it, w it went really well. So for a good, I'd say, two, three months, we were in a van traveling around the country. And by the time the Stones tour had come around, we had gone to England for about a, two weeks. And, and that was about it. That's as far out as we had gone. And that was kind of fun. Um, so we were all Now you're playing stadiums, though. No, no. With, with the we, Stones? With the Stones, we're playing stadiums. Yeah, that's but, when, but, when you get in with that. But, but before that, we were playing places about, playing as, clubs. about as big as this room here. <laughs> smaller than the Chance, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, much smaller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we're playing in small the clubs. The punk places. Yeah, you're like the, more of the underground mm -hmm. kind, of, kind of spots. We're playing in, you know... Well, like you mentioned, CB's, C we played CB's Tramps. CB's, so, and Tramps, that was, those are New York clubs. But <clears throat> we played this place in... Uh, Gainesville, Florida, called Einstein and Gogo, amazing, amazing place. It was like a record store and a club, and you know we're playing to you know University of Florida folks that were that that got hip to the band, and that's what we were doing. We're playing in college towns around the world as, as far as we could, as far as we could, and then we were, then we got on the Stones tour, which is obviously much, much, much bigger, um, and we just kept playing we seen as much as we possibly could see and then we went then we kept working even after after the stones tour and then we went into the studio and then you put and then we then we made uh, times up times up and times up was again us being in rehearsal constantly and writing and then taking it out and playing it somewhere around town or we would find bits and pieces of things that we had ideas about and we worked them out on stage. So Time's Up was sort of, we worked it out in rehearsal. Whereas something like, uh, let me see the record. I can tell you exactly what it was. We, we worked out outside of, oh yes. We were so young, so young. <laughs> yeah. So young, I can't read this. Um, yeah, thank you. Oh, that's much better. You know, Lover is Ugly Head, we worked out, at, at, out on, like we played it and then we then we refined it after we, after we put it, after we worked it out. Um, but, you know, a bunch of this stuff was just us sort of working it all out. And in the meantime, Type was another one like that. Um, we, wanted to you know we were trying you know the 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 idea of cult personality had blown up and everything else and, and you know the expectation was to a large degree why don't you make another cult personality and we didn't want to do that we wanted to make something different we wanted to constantly be evolving and not just stuck in one spot but you know so we put out type as a first single 
which did really, really well because it, uh, off the heels of, you know, this band is doing something interesting and they, and they were out there and, we were, and, and immediately we didn't rest on our laurels. We went back out on the road. Right, right. And we never stopped. Again, with all of our records, we want to play them live. We want to be able to play them out there for people to get, a, to get immediate feedback. You know, whether they like it or they think it sucks. Either way, we want to figure it out. And we still do that. When we make a record, we want to play it for people to hear what they have to think, hear what they think about it. And find out what they really want from it. Ooh, Sunny and Cher's greatest hits. Now, um, were you affected with grunge at that time? Because that's about 90, it's starting to come in. Is that right, going right, to have right. an effect on Living Color? Not like the other hand, no. Like no. The hand, not, you're not hand metal, actually. No, we were I never thought you were. I have a lot of hair, but yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't no. a hair band. You know, you know um, what I'm saying? Did yeah. grunge have an effect on no. you guys? Um, we we had an idea. You know, there is a there was a, enough to 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 mine with the ideas that we had, and it, and and you know what we were playing was as much as what we were saying. So we wanted to make sure that, that what we were saying had had the chance to be heard and understood. So when you're doing something like type, or you're doing something like Love Is Ugly Head, or anything like that, it would Love Rears Ugly Head was another song we worked out on stage as well as in rehearsal. We wanted to make sure that you heard it and and and, and know that there that there was a there was much more to us than just that one song. That there was much more to us something we had much more to say than, you know, this sort of social kind of idea of what the world is. We wanted to show you what the, what, what we thought of the world. And that was where our our, our main goal was at the time. No, you put a couple more albums out yeah. and um, Biscuits is an EP, is an Stain, EP. Yeah. and then your Pride's like a greatest hits type of thing yeah. and that comes up to about 95 and then the wheels come off the car or you guys just take a break? We needed to take a break. We were, you we took were, a break. We were, we, were, we were really, really burnt. Like like they said, we didn't stop working. Like we we went out all most of 1988, We we stopped at the at the end of 88 and then started working on a new record and then immediately going out on the road and then immediately sort of things we were you're working that cycle yeah we're getting in this really sort of tiring cycle like you get on the bus you get off the bus you do the gig you get on the bus you go to the next town you get off the bus you go to the gig and it started to become very very repetitive and and we were worried about burnout really really worried about burnout and you know when you have when you live with four people on a bus for longer than you know a week or so it wears you out it will wear you out and, and we had to take a break from each other really it's like we a had, family at yeah that we point had too. to we had to walk away from each other and that was and you know muzzy had left the band at that point and like because of that burnout it's like i can't i'm not doing this what did you replace muzzy um that was when we did uh i believe it was stain stain he Staying was when Doug came Doug in. Comes in. Yeah, um, and we uh, um, so we were dealing with all that stuff, you know. And so we so we thought we could keep going. Muzzy had Muzzy was a smart one. He was like, I'm gonna take a break, and give myself some time to rest. Needed some air. Then he needs some time to rest. And we were like, No, no, we gotta keep going. We gotta keep going. You don't know how long this is gonna last. You gotta strike while the iron is hot. And we did keep going. We got Muzzy, we got Doug in the band, and we just kept pushing along. And the burnout just didn't relent. You know, it wasn't a. It, it did a lot. It did a lot to our our, our home lives. It did a lot to our uh, our social lives. And, and you know, I hadn't seen my parents. You know, my my father died in the middle of us uh, being on the road tour. Uh, while on tour. Actually, literally, like we were. We were, um, we were home. I, I was home for a couple of days. I left, and when I came back, he was gone. You know, oh, so yeah. yeah. So I had to, you know, that, and, and didn't have really have time to grieve. You know, didn't have time to to, you know, uh, for to be there for my mother. You know what I mean? So that was part of the part of what I, I needed. We all we. In a way, we all need to do. We need to find a time to breathe and get our minds together. And, and you know, um, it felt like it was gonna, you know, we were gonna do this for a while. We we're gonna stop for a while and then get back together. And then there was a point at which we thought, 
maybe not. Maybe I could do something else. Maybe I could go somewhere else and I could do other things. I can, I can make my own music, you know. And everybody in the band decided, yeah, let's make our own music. We, uh, you know, Vern put out a record and Will put out a record and, and you put out and, a I, and I put out a record. Corey put um, out hymns, which is about thirty years old. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Coming up on that our Come. anniversary a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thirty out of thirty anniversary. anniversary. Yeah. Now hymns is very well rounded. Yeah, yeah. You got some gospel, like you said. Yeah, gospel. well, it was like funk. My contribution to what Living Color was in, in an album, basically. Corey's contribution. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it was a great album. I uh, thank you, thank you. It had some really good stuff on it, and. You know, I took the things that I learned from Living Color and I took some of the things that I, that I learned just by doing this for a while and and applied it to making hymns, you know? Any favorites on that album, personal? Um, one is a really interesting one. Is a really one I love on this record. There's a bunch of them. Um, April Rain is obviously, yeah. I mean, April Rain's a very good yeah, one. April Rain is... The is, single was odd. Is, is, yeah. It's a good song. Yeah, you know the single. Do you first? Yeah. Do you first? Do you first? Do you first is my, <laughs> first? Do you first is my absolute absolute favorite. It was a, That's a good song. Yeah. You know, it was, you know, it was the best of uh, of of that of of that period, and I had some really good producers and and writers that helped me out. Um, v. Jeffrey Smith and, and and Peter Lord from this band called The Family Stand. Helped me out a lot on that one, and I can't thank them enough. And uh, I had uh, J. Mark was an engineer um, who had worked on, you know, Philly, Philly International Records. And oh, he did the like he he was a like I was looking to do like I wanted a record that sounded like this like vinyl like I wanted old, like old I wanted, to, vinyl? I wanted to sound yeah like a like Bar 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 yes I wanted to sound like this <laughs> um and so Jay was the guy to, to do it and we had all these people that were very 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 helpful and um, and shout out to the face records who you know after a minute of I was with Epic for a minute, and then I was like, eh, "This is not going to work," and they didn't think it was going to work. And I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna go someplace else." And I found a, found a new home, and it was LaFace and out in Atlanta. And I moved to Atlanta for you a while. Moved to Atlanta. I moved to, for just a bit, just just to be near the record company and know and be a part of what makes how to make this record sort of a, a good transition. So, what was that? Speaking about how young I am, this is the cover of Rolling Stone, 1990. It is uh, November 1st, 1990. Yeah. Uh, had a good look at how big they were at the time. They made the cover of the Rolling Stone. And that that that, that made my friends very, uh, uh, what's the word I want to look for? They gave me a lot of shit. Were they jealous? They gave me a lot. They weren't jealous, <laughs> but they just gave me a lot of shit. Cause... Your real friends are your real friends. <laughs> yeah. You know that. <laughs> you know, I tell a story all the time. I was in the, they had a, we had a break in during the Stones tour. And I came home, and I'm still living at home with my with my mother. And she was like, "Okay, that's great. You're off the road. Good. You have nothing to do. Here's a paint. Here's a brush. <laughs> the house. Here's the stoop. Paint the stoop." So I had my friends drive by while I'm painting the stoop, giving me lots of grief. Like the rock star is painting a stoop. You know, it's like, no. My mother says, "I you talk to her and tell her I tell her rock stars don't do that. She'll throw you out the house." So, um, so I, so I, ha I did get a little, little grief for that, but you know, my friends knew this is what I wanted to do. And the fact that I got a chance to do exactly what I said I was going to do was they, 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 they gave me props for that. You know, that's good. That's yeah. what friends are for. Exactly. Now you guys moved along. You put out a uh, kaleidoscope, right? Right. Uh, that was like 2003, eight, yeah. 2003. Is the band still in function all the time, constantly? Or are you just taking breaks? Or we take you never actually formally break up, correct? We, well, we we did formally did. break up. We, and, and what was that? Like ninety something, um, like ninety six, ninety seven. We broke up. So then that that would be the return album. Uh, yeah, yeah. Kaleidoscope. Kaleidoscope was was sort of like a, that's a tough back. one to find, by the way. Yeah, yeah. It really is. It, it is. Um, and we went we went back to the well. It was like. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about the things that we that we know about. You know, 9/11 had happened, and we want to talk. We really want to talk about that. Um, we wanted to talk about the world as it was now. You know, it was changing. You know, the internet was new. We had, and, and we wanted to talk about that. We had talked about it before with information overload, but we wanted to get to 
more in depth in that sort of thing. So we were going, going we we're, we're plumbing as much, doing as much as we possibly could, you know. And entering the new decade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And new millennia. You know, it was like, what is that going? What does that entail? What are we? What are we going to be? What's what are we in store for? You know, more of the same, or is it going to be different? Oh, you put out a, I mean, you put out uh, the, what's the chair in the room? Chair in the doorway. The chair in the doorway. That's, I mean, that's great. I, yeah. I have that. I just couldn't find it right now. Uh -huh. and, but this is. They the, don't have it here either. This one, when you came out with Shade, it really brought yeah. me back to you guys again. Yeah. It was now, this is on Megaforce Records, Johnny right. Z's record mm -hmm. label. And uh, this was a great album. This is 217. Yeah. So this is about the last living color thing. This is the last living color record yeah. we put out, and this is as our idea was. Um, we were going to look at the blues as a genre of music and how to kind of deconstruct it. We did the Robert Johnson tune, um, and we made yeah. There's a lot on there. Man. Yeah, there's a yeah. bunch of stuff. You know, freedom of expression. And, well, preaching blues is, was was a Robert Johnson cover. Um, you know, but we wanted to. Figure out how to do that. So it's an inner city blues, obviously. You got some great, like who shot me? Who I shot mean, you? That, that sends yeah. uh, a message right well, there. Well, we wanted to, we that want to talk. A... We really wanted to talk about that because you know the proliferation of guns, even at that time, was way too much. And this is two seventeen. This is yeah. two thousand seventeen. You know, and, and these kind of things were happening already. So we thought, you know, we want to talk about it. We want to have a conversation. And you guys it. always did talk about it. Yeah. About the yeah, whatever's going on in the really, world. Really, you really did. Yeah, always. Always had to. Now you have some solo stuff I want to ask you about. Okay. Uh, the last hit, Bad Penny. Bad Penny is. Uh, how'd you get involved with Danny Miranda and those guys? And Danny, what is that? It, that? That's only a downloadable, right? Yeah, that's it's only only via yeah. download. That's a good song. It's a good song. It's a, good it's song. a really good song. My friend Militia Vox, um, who's in this, uh, who is in, in this Ju in band called Judas Priestess, and she ah, does, does some solo stuff. Okay, gotcha. Singing from Judas, Judas gotcha. Priestess. And she called and said they're looking for a male singer, and I suggested you when they called me, and I did it, and it was fun. It was lots of fun. It was easy, but it was fun. It was quick. It was very, very quick. We did that time. Yeah. Now, the one I really want to talk about was Disciples. Disciples of Verity. Mm -hmm. Now, I got this from somebody in the chance who actually plays on it, right. my friend Joe. Okay. And... uh I didn't know you were on it at first. Right. I put it in. It was dark. And right. I put it in the car. And I'm like, I know this voice. Right. And I got home and I read it. I'm like, Corey right. Clover. Right. Yeah. Did, how do you come out with this? This is really hard and heavy stuff. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, It's not in your wheelhouse normally. Yeah, well, it's, it's like, it's, it's not punk. It's heavy metal. It's, yes. It's, it's more of a, it's like a prog metal kind of thing. Yeah, going it's on. very good prog metal. Yeah. Um, and my friend uh, who... You can blame all of this on is George Pond. He's okay. Uh, George, uh, uh, George Pond is a great bass player, great producer. George really picked him. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and he's uh, he, yeah, and he kind of roped me into it. Like we were at the uh, Nam show in Anaheim, California, one year, and he's like, "I'm doing this project." And no, are they from around here? Though? They're from South Jersey. Actually. Okay, South so, Jersey. so it's, it's a long drive from that's, here. That's gonna say that's what we just did this week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we yeah, yeah, exactly. It was, he's yeah, he's from Jackson. So oh, um, God, yeah, it's further than we were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's from South South Jersey. He's yeah. from real South Jersey. Um, and he, he's like, I got this project. I got a couple songs. Could you sing on them for me and let me see how this goes? Like two songs turned into six songs, and six turn, songs turned into an album. And then you got the whole album. Then you got the whole whole, whole album, and then we got uh, Corey Pierce from uh, God forbid to play drums on it, which was which was great. He's um, he is amazing. Corey, it's a pain in the ass, but he's amazing, and you know, um, and just we tried to you know. We rehearsed a lot with that, and, and we tried, and we went on the road for a mi for a bit with that. And then you we did go on the road. With yeah, it's for a minute. Oh, and wow. so the, the sm again, the small, small club, clubs gotcha. in a van again. Um, and then we're and right this very minute, scoop. We're making a new record. This band, no, okay, that, with that band, very good. So disciples of verity, you should, another album. Should look out for that. It should be out. I will. Fall. Yeah, I enjoyed that one. Yeah, yeah. Now speaking of making new music, mm. in December yes. on YouTube. I do believe I saw a little clip, a one minute or two minute clip of a Living Color in a studio. Yeah. Are you guys working on new music? Oh, right absolutely. Now? We're always working you on new music. You are. Always working on new music. It's, it's, it's difficult. It's been 2017 since yeah, you it's, dropped it's, something. Yeah, we, t we like to take our time in making albums. That's, that's, that's a blessing and a curse. Because you get enough, you get a lot of material while in, in the space between. But, you know, a lot, 
vacuum, you know, it's that nature abhors a vacuum. So if there's nothing to do, something will come up to do. And we all have something to do, you know. You're running um, around a lot. Yeah, we're working all the time. And, um, you know, everybody's do out doing other things, you know, so it's hard. Like we have to, we have to carve out time to be able to get together and really sort of concentrate on making a record, which, you know, is difficult, you know, when you, you know, I know for myself, I'm a parent, my kids are going off to college. Um, Mine too? Yeah, you they know. Got kids. With, with that, you, with those, those are your kids, kids with me, yeah. on Sunday? Uh, yeah. I thought so. Yeah. I didn't want to be rude. No, no, those, those are my sons. <laughs> college, which college are you in? Um, I th one of them wants to, is going to go to school around here somewhere, I think, one of the, one of the SUNY schools. And the other one wants to be a chef. So, okay. are they twins? No, no, huh? they're they're close in age, very close, close in age. Okay. Yeah. Um, they we didn't waste any time. Their mother and I. Now here's an oddball question. Yeah. Anybody ever asked if you're related to Roger Glover? Roger from Deep Purple. No, I didn't think so. No. Uh, no. Uh, Christian, what's that? Christian Glover? Yeah, Christian, I'm, how about Christian? No, Christian not him no. either. Um, <laughs> Donald? No. No, no, no. Oh. John, so, no. No, none of them. We see you uh, coming around with Extreme. Yes, yes. This summer. This summer. What a great build. Two funk rock bands. Mm -hmm. uh, you're opening up. Yeah. I, I'm hoping that does lead to more music. You guys out on the road, maybe yeah. a little more writing. Yeah, yeah, a little more collaborations. Yes, absolutely. Does, um, does Corey have any solo stuff coming up that you want to promote? Well, I'm doing this. Um, there's, there's nothing I'm, I've written although I'm, I'm thinking about doing some more writing um you know i had this thing where i do this acoustics thing that i was doing earlier this year um we were, we were opening for the guys from soul asylum um and they were doing a uh, duet acoustic thing and it was me and my partner uh mike Ciro, who's also very busy so we thinking about doing making an acoustic record I'm also doing, I've been doing this uh, sort of like this uh, funk fusion sort of thing, soul kind of thing. We played recently, like two weeks ago, up at the Falcon, which is not That's that what I meant. We, I saw that show too late. I yeah. caught it. But and, and that's we, a great place to play. It's an amazing place. And I that's where that you, you did that type show there. Yeah, I did that show okay. there. And I, we play at the Park Theater in Hudson. So yeah, I'd love to catch a solo. Yeah. So. so we're going to try to do some, I'm going to try to do some more of that. And of course, you got the, the disciple stuff and the living color. And, the living stuff. color. and anything else anybody calls and me for. Busy you may. Helps me pay the rent. Yeah. Don't forget the 30th anniversary. 35 years. 35 years. 35 years. <laughs> Corey Glover. We don't have, I don't have children this old. Oh. Thank have, you, everybody. Close this old. <laughs> you don't have clothes this old. <laughs> I don't have anything this old. Well, I appreciate your time, <laughs> and this album is a classic. And thanks for your time. Anytime, buddy. Thank you, everybody.